What's up guys, Steven here from techmaker.tv. In this episode, we're gonna be taking a quick look at Stimulus JS. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to the channel because we're putting out new content like this every single day. Um, but with that said, let's go ahead and jump in. On the stimulusjs.org homepage, there's this cool example. Um, looks a little bit weird when you haven't seen it before. Um, you can type in your name, so I'll type mine and click greet and it'll pop up and say, hello, Steven. Um, we're gonna build this out um, in the simplest way possible and then we're gonna play around with it a little bit to really understand how it works. And then at the end, we might talk a little bit about when you should use this and why you should use this. So over on stimulusjs.org slash handbook slash installing, um, if you scroll all the way down, first of all, there's a lot of options for how to do this. But if we scroll down to using without a build system, this basically just shows us how we can use a CDN um, and a straight up HTML page. So I'm just gonna copy this and we're gonna put it into its own HTML file back in our editor and then um, we'll just run it straight like this. Okay, so I'm back over in my code editor and I have created a file called test.html. And I've just opened that file up over here in Chrome and I'm just gonna paste in uh, the, the code that we copied from the other window. Next, I'm actually gonna copy uh, the stuff from over here. And I won't make you watch the whole thing, but I'm gonna copy both of these sections and just paste them below. All right, so I'm back in my code editor and you can see here I've just pasted in the contents of those two boxes they have on that web page. So I'm going to copy, oh, didn't mean to close that. I'm going to copy this bit, or cut it rather, and just paste it and replace everything in the body. Um, and next, let's actually comment out this code down here, um, all of that, and let's refresh over here. And let's check our, um, what happens if we type hello, and we click greet. So down here, you can see that we've got uh, an error message in our console saying that we're referencing an undefined method greet. And if we come back up here, you can see that we obviously haven't really defined anything yet. And compared to how that other web page looked, this looks a little bit messy. And so I'm actually going to rearrange this a little bit to make it a little more obvious, in my opinion, what's happening. So we can create a... Uh, let's call it the hello controller and then we'll set that equal to all of this like that and then in here what we're going to do is register the hello controller so let's go ahead and run this again just refresh the page it's obviously just want to make sure that we didn't actually trigger any errors on loading the page or anything. Um, but as you can see, this looks a little bit more like we looked at on the other web page. We have a class that we're creating that extends the stimulus controller. We have a static get targets method. And then application is a stimulus application. And then we're registering our hello controller as hello. Okay, so now that we've got that set up, let's go down here and look at our other little bit of code that we copied. So we don't need to do this import controller thing, right? The hello controller comment, whatever. Um, we don't need the class, we've already got that. Really all we need to do is copy these two things and then we can get rid of the rest of that. And then what we're gonna do in here is just replace the contents of this class with what we copied from the website. And I think I can put that back on one line maybe. Yeah, so let's refresh over here. And we'll put our name, or my name, you put your name. And now it's gonna print out hello Steven if I click greet. So the reason we didn't need to do the import and all of that stuff is because of the strategy we're using here. We're actually using the script tag with uh, pulling in the code this way. And then uh, just referencing code that comes in via the script tag. So depending on how you set this up, you'll handle that differently. But you know, a lot of this stuff is all really configuration. The code that we really care about is this. 
Um, so that said, let's dissect how this is working a little bit. So we obviously we have a controller and we're registering that controller as hello. Then down here in the body, we have this data controller equals hello, and that's telling essentially the app that you know we're in we're this little block of code is dealing with the hello controller. And then we have a data target hello.name, and you can see that maps to targets name up here and then we have name target right here which we'll come back to in a second um, we have this data action and then it's got a click event with an arrow pointer to hello greet so this is kind of a weird syntax in a way but it makes sense if you think about it basically what we're saying is hey if somebody clicks this button we want you to trigger this method back over on the hello controller and then we have another data target output or hello.output. And so what I want to point out is when we have these uh, HTML elements that have a data target, it's essentially letting us identify an element from within our controller based on a name. And you can see how that's being used in our greet method. So somebody clicks on the button like we did. Um, let's say Bill and it's going to change to Bill when we click greet. So we click greet, it calls the greet method. And what it's doing is saying this dot output target dot text content equals hello this dot name target dot value. Now this is purely based on what we declare inside of this targets array and then what we call down here. And to prove that to you, let's change this to something ridiculous like ASDF. And then we'll say this dot ASDF target dot text content. And then down here we'll say ASDF. So let's save this and refresh. Hello, oh, we didn't say hello, that's weird. We'll just say ASDF. And so now it says hello ASDF. So what this little experiment is telling us is that when we declare something in this targets, we're dynamically getting two things. We're getting this ASDF target method, which kind of makes sense, right? So you see name target here that corresponds to this. So it's dynamically generating an attribute, um, which is actually pointing at an element. And we can see that the element is identified by the target down here, right? So essentially what this does is just create a mapping so that all these things can identify each other. So we know that this is the same ASDF as this, is the same ASDF as this, um, because of this syntax that we've set up. So it's pretty cool. Um, let's look at how we can modify this a bit and understand it a little bit better. All right, so let's first of all take a look at the fact that we can use different events. So we don't just have to use click, we can call any sort of browser event that we want. So suppose we want to do um, a focus event on this. So we can say uh, data action equals focus and then we can say like hello um, and then we should say something like um, log focus okay and let me see if I can like I guess I don't actually need the that open on that side so that'll make that a little bit better okay so what this is gonna do is say let's refresh over here and let's uh, click and now it's gonna tell us Hey, there's an undefined method log focus. So let's create that method. So we're just going to say log focus, and then we'll say console.log focusing really hard. Okay, and now let's click back. Cool. So now what we've basically done is we just tied a new action to our, our text input. What I like about this so far, because I'm, I'm fairly new to this too, I've just kind of started recently picking this up and working with it, but what's nice is normally what you have to do if you wanted to just do this little log event on this input is you have to have a class or an ID or something on this input and then do some kind of query selector in your JavaScript and then add an event listener and then uh, so on and so forth, then perform your console.log. So here, all we're doing is we're just adding this data action and telling it which focus or which uh, function we want it to call on focus, and then we just have the function up here in our controller. 
So I think that's pretty neat. We can also specify multiple events um, to react to. So what we can do is say like blur and then hello. So we need to put the arrow. Hello. And then we'll say um, log blur. And then up here, um, we can actually write the log blur. Okay, so let's try this. So now if we click in and if we click out. So you can see here that you can basically attach multiple things to one uh, element. So that's about it for this episode. Actually, I really just wanted to kind of make sure that I did a little bit of content covering this because I'm planning to use this a fair bit in some upcoming series. So I just wanted to make sure you guys all had something to reference back to in case you haven't seen this before. Um, but with all that said, um, I think that pretty much covers the basics, like the very basics. Um, there's obviously a lot more to it, but that's good for now. So I will talk to you in the next episode.